hello, hello, welcome back. Our topic for this evening is volume by washers. So hopefully you're familiar with what a washer is. If you're not, um, I've got one on the screen there for you to look at. Um, perhaps if you're pretty handy, you've used washers when you screw something together, or perhaps you've played the game washers, a yard game called washers, and in fact they are played with a washer that looks just like this. Um, but basically you can see that you have two circles. We kind of have this outer circle and then this inner circle here. And clearly our inner circle um, is empty. Um, some people like to think of it as a donut as well. Okay. So we like to think of this washer as having two radii. And let's go ahead and draw them in. Um, so go ahead and give yourself a washer if you haven't. And we're going to put a, a nice dot in the center of our circle here. And we're going to say there's technically a small radius and a big radius. So I'm going to go ahead and use this bracket to kind of draw in my big radius, and you should be doing the same. And I want you to label that with big R. Okay, and then my little radius is going to be this here, and I'm going to call that little r. And we're going to refer to it as big R and little r for large radius and small radius. And, and that's pretty common lingo among the AP world, big R and little r. So because I have two radii, the way I'm going to represent my volume when I have a washer is going to be volume equals the integral, you know, of course we'll just say from A to B for now, of pi. And instead of saying just r squared like it was if it were a disk, I'm going to be saying big R squared minus little r squared dx. Okay, so again, this is strictly for my washer, pi big R squared minus little r squared. And of course, we're going to pull that pi out. And I'm just saying big R squared minus little r squared dx. So let's go ahead and dive in. And again, I'll have um, some great visuals in class to go along with this. I'll do my best on the, the video here, but I'll have some more 3D objects I can show you. All right, example number one. All right, so question one, f of x equals two minus x squared, y equals one, and we're gonna rotate this around the x-axis. And our goal, of course, is to find the volume generated by this figure. So first and foremost, just like the absolutes from the other day, we wanna make sure we have a nice sketch of what's taking place here. Uh, so I'm gonna say two minus x squared is a parabola shifted up to, facing down. y equals one, it's a nice horizontal line at 1, and I'm just going to make a little note, I'm revolving my function around the x-axis. Alright, so I'm going to carefully sketch in my shaded region here, and I want you to ask yourself, is this a disk or is it a washer? Alright, well and I think it's fairly obvious, if you're going to take this shape and rotate it about this line, are you going to have any empty space at some point between your, your shaded region and the line you're rotating about? And I would say 100% yes. Notice none of this function in yellow here is touching this axis at all. So as it comes around and creates that circle, none of it should be touching the x-axis. So there's going to be this gap here, which is going to create the washer method. All right. So let's review a few things. Um, first off, and go ahead and start this in your notebook, you want to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation, so you know which way to draw in your radii. Okay. Um, second, your radius that you draw in, or your rectangle, is always going to the axis of rotation. Okay, and that's huge. It's not an option at this point. You are drawing in a rectangle, just like we did for area, and your radius or your rectangle is always going to the axis of rotation. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm still going to draw my rectangle inside the figure that I'm shading. Okay, and now let me grab a different color here. What I want every paper to be the same, you're going to go from the top of your rectangle to the axis of rotation, and you're going to call that big R. And then you're going to go from the bottom of the rectangle to the axis of rotation and call that little r. All right, so let me say it again. You're drawing in your rectangle. You're going from the top of your rectangle to the axis of rotation, bottom of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. And that's describing your radius, your big r and your little r. Once you've got that figured out, 
Now we just kind of plug them into the formula and integrate from there. So I'm going to say volume equals pi integral of big R squared minus little r squared dx. So I've got volume equals pi. I'll worry about my bounds in a moment. Let me take care of my big R squared minus my little r squared. And pay attention to the brackets and parentheses here. Okay? So first I'm going to describe big R squared. And you're always saying upper minus lower. So my upper of big R, so I drew my bracket in just like yours should be. My big R top is sitting on 2 minus x squared minus the lower end of the r by big R is on this line y equals 0. So I'm going to say minus 0. Now it's that quantity squared. So again, it's big R squared minus. Now I'm going to describe little r. And again, I'm saying upper minus lower. The upper end of little r is on 1. The lower end is on 0. 1 minus 0 is that quantity squared. Close my bracket, dx. Now, to get my bounds where I'm integrating from, of course, we're just going to set the two functions equal. So if I set my 2 minus x squared equal to 1, I get negative x squared equals negative 1, x equals plus and minus 1. So I'm going to integrate from negative 1 to positive 1. So I guess maybe we should just pause and make sure our setup is okay. I mean, setup is the, the most important part. The math should be the, the easy part by now, hopefully. Okay, so I drew my rectangle in. My big R goes from the top of my rectangle to the axis of rotation. Little r goes from the bottom of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. It's upper minus lower, upper minus lower. All right, so from here, it's just kind of plug and chug integrate. Um, I'm going to clean up a little, of course, so I'm going to go from negative 1 to 1. Um, I'm going to take my time and foil this junk out. It's this quantity squared, and of course, minus 0 is really nothing there. Uh, so that piece to me turns into 4 minus uh, 4x squared plus x to the fourth. And then 1 minus 0 is 1, and 1 squared is 1, so minus 1 dx. And I'm, again, going to clean it up just a little further. Negative 1 to 1, that's really 3 minus 4x squared plus x to the 4th dx. And from there, hopefully just a nice integrate. Uh, plug your numbers in. I'm going to leave my pi out front. Uh, 3x minus 4x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5th over 5. And I'm going from negative 1 to 1. Again, just carefully plug the numbers in. Uh, 3 minus 4 thirds plus 1 fifth. That's my upper minus. Plug my negative 1 in. Negative 3 plus 4 thirds minus 1 fifth. Um, again, you know, I'll go through this one last time here. I'm going to get some nice common denominators. Um, I'm going with 15. So I'll change colors real quick. I'm going to multiply this term by 15, 5, and 3. Uh, so 45 minus 20 plus 3. Again, I'm going to say 15, so this gets 15, 5, and 3. So negative 45 plus 20 minus 3. Clean up my math here. That looks like 28 over 15 minus, uh, this looks like negative 28 over 15 for a total of 56 over 15. And don't forget that pi you had out front, pi. And now we've got the volume of that washer. So again, the most important part is to take care of that setup and the rest hopefully should follow real nice. All right, question two. Y equals radical X and Y equals X squared. And we're gonna revolve this around the X axis. All right, so again, perfect sketch. I'm going to use two different colors here. Radical x, to be nice and obvious by now. y equals x squared. It's going to look like this. And I'm going to take that section I found. So I'm just going to color it in yellow, and you can shade yours in or whatever. And I'm revolving that around the x-axis. So say to yourself, is the entire graph sitting on there and creating a disk, or is there ever going to be a gap and you're going to have a hole known as a washer? 
Well, if you think about this, you might you might get tricked at first. You might be thinking, okay, it's sitting right here on the x-axis, but that's only for a split second. Once you veer off, clearly there's this gap here, and that's telling me I'm going to create a washer. If at any point you get a gap, it's an automatic washer. All right, so let's draw our rectangle in perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And now take the time to write your big R and little r. And you're always going from the top of the rectangle to the axis of rotation, bottom of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. All right, so lots of self-talk. Volume equals the integral, uh, whatever my bounds are, pi, big R squared minus little r squared. So volume equals pi, the integral, big R squared. So I'm on the red function minus zero. Okay, so notice my bracket in parentheses. I'm going to say that's radical x minus zero squared minus my little r. It's x squared minus zero squared dx. Uh, my lower bound should be real obvious. Looks like they're intersecting at zero. And if I'm not sure where the upper bound is, I'm just going to set those two equal. So off to the side, radical x equals x squared. Uh, I'm going to square both sides. So x equals x to the fourth. Set it equal to zero x to the fourth minus x, pull out an x, I get x cubed minus one equals zero, tee it up. There's your x equals zero and your x equals one. Now this in fact turns out real nice actually. Um, even though square roots tend to freak people out, notice you're squaring them. So when you take this term, radical x minus zero is radical x, square it, you just get x minus, this becomes x to the fourth, dx. Um, again, I'll quickly integrate, and hopefully we're, we're feeling good. x squared over 2 minus x to the fifth over 5, going from 0 to 1. Don't forget that pi out front. Upper minus lower. Uh, so I've got 1 half minus 1 fifth minus a lower of 0. Uh, common denominator there is going to get me, oops, 3 over 10 times pi. All right, so my goal is just to set up the next bunch. Again, I'm going to assume that you can integrate, and we're just going to focus on setting them up. All right, notice I'm going to use the same functions. The only thing that's different is what I'm going to rotate about, my axis of revolution here. Um, so let's go ahead and sketch those functions. Again, it's the exact same. And I just be very, very careful. I am now going to rotate about the line y equals negative 2. So we're going to have to draw that in. And we'll label that as our axis of rotation. Okay. So get your rectangle drawn in perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So again, we're vertical. Okay. Practice saying this on your own. Big R is the upper to the axis of rotation. Little r is the bottom of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. Okay, it's all about the axis of rotation. So we'll just plug them in our formula. Volume equals pi. We already know our bounds go from 0 to 1 from the previous question. Big R squared is going to be radical x minus, lower is negative 2 squared, minus, I need little r, Looks like x squared minus negative 2 squared dx. Okay, see if you follow that. I'm looking at big R, I'm saying upper minus lower. Little r is upper minus lower. Um, I'm just going to clean that up. I'm not actually going to integrate the whole thing. Again, I'm hoping that's the easy part. This is actually the term radical x plus 2 squared. Minus, this of course is x squared plus 4, whoops, my bad, plus 2 squared dx. Um, and again, you would just have to take your time and foil those out. Don't try any fancy u sub. Take a few moments to foil it out anytime you see something squared. Uh, so hopefully you can do radical x plus 2 times radical x plus 2 would get us x plus 4 radical x plus 4 minus um, x to the fourth plus 4x four squared plus 4. 
dx, of course. And I'm going to go one step further and just distribute uh, that negative through. Uh, so I've got x plus 4 radical x plus 4. It's going to be minus x to the 4th, minus 4x squared, minus 4dx. And then, of course, I would combine some like terms. Um, you'll notice here that the positive 4 and negative 4 are even canceling out. So we should only have four terms to integrate. And again, I'm going to skip that part and just focus on the setup. I'll let you play with the math on your own or in class tomorrow. All right, so we're really stressing these setups. Um, same functions, y equals radical x, y equals x squared, y equals 4. And we're revolving about that line. Again, I, I want to see a different sketch for each one. Don't cheat yourself. Uh, you're not going to get it if you keep trying to do it around the same picture. Every function should have a different sketch. Radical x, x squared. Uh, we know we're going from 1 to 4. Or, I'm sorry, 0 to 1. All right, I've got my rectangle in there perpendicular to the axis of rotation, which I need to draw in as well. Y equals 4. It's going to be way up here. All right, so take your time drawing it in, especially on this one. You're going from the end of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. So clearly that's the small one. That's my little r. And I'm going from the end of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. That's my big R. All right, so volume equals pi. Big R squared minus little r squared. So again, 0 to 1. Take your time with big R and say upper minus lower. Even though you might be thinking it's backwards, just upper minus lower. You'll notice the upper end this time is on 4 and the lower is on x squared. So this is 4 minus x squared squared minus upper minus lower. 4 minus radical x squared. Okay, and again, I'm just going to worry about that setup. Obviously, you would foil these out and integrate very similar to the last one. But upper minus lower, upper minus lower. Big R squared minus little r squared. All right, so same two functions, and this time it gets uglier. We are revolving it around the y-axis. So let's go ahead and get those functions sketched. You should be a pro at that by now. And here's where it gets ugly, okay? Revolving things around the y-axis or vertical lines, not the nicest. So first and foremost, remember, you have to be perpendicular to that axis of rotation. So you are no longer a vertical line, you are now horizontal. Okay, so that means our bounds are no longer 0 and 1. All right, so we've got to use some common sense here. Now, I'm going to draw my big R and little r in. Instead of saying upper minus lower, we've talked about this, we are now saying right minus left. So I'm going to go from the big end of the rectangle, or the one furthest away, to the axis of rotation. That's my big R. Little end of the rectangle to the axis of rotation. That is my little r. All right, so we'll get those two out of the way. Next, I'm going to get my bounds. Well, we know this point is 0, 0. All right, so let's make note of that in our book there, 0, 0. And I need to get this point. I know the x value is 1 from the previous problems, and if I plug 1 into either one of these equations, I get 1, 1. So here's the deal. Since this rectangle basically can move up and down instead of left and right, you are using the heights. So box in the y values, and those are the bounds we're using. So I'm going to say volume equals pi. The integral from 0 to 1. Now, don't dive right in and start doing your right minus left at the moment. What we have to do is put everybody in terms of y. Okay, so when you're horizontal, just like we've practiced, you can only use the letter y. So I need to go back and solve these two equations. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to square this one, square this one. So x equals y squared is one equation. On this one, I'm going to take the square root and I get x equals radical y for my second equation. All right, and I'm going to label those just so I keep them straight. This one is x equals radical y, and this one is x equals y squared. 
All right. So big R. I am saying right minus left of my bracket. My right is on this green function, which is radical Y, minus the left, which is on 0, squared, minus the right of my little rectangle is on Y squared, minus its left, which is 0, squared, and now make sure you slap a dy on instead. Okay, now the math is the same. You would square each term, go ahead and solve, um, but we're really focusing on that setup. So I've got just one more for you. Stay with me. Um, sketch it out. It's the same two functions, and I'll tell you what we're revolving about. All right, so I've just sketched mine out, my x squared, my radical x. Um, the key here is that we're revolving about the line x equals negative 4, so I'm going to have to draw that in separately. Let's see, here's uh, x equals negative 4. Um, I've labeled my points, and again, this is the same exact thing as last time, and I've solved my equations in terms of y. So I need to be perpendicular to this line I drew, so I'm going horizontal, and I'm going to carefully draw my bracket in. Okay, one end of the rectangle to the axis of rotation, the big one you're going to call big R, the little one you're going to call little r. All right, see if you can set the formula up on your own by now. Hopefully, this is a piece of cake. Pause it, try it on your own, see if we get the same thing. So hopefully you're thinking what I've got here looks good to you. 0 to 1. Uh, I'm going to actually say that's oops, radical y plus 4 squared minus, this is y squared plus 4 squared dy. And there you've got your setup. And again, I'm going to assume the integrating is the easy part by now. So a lot of self-talk tonight, whether it's upper minus lower, right minus left, um, big R squared minus little r squared. Lots to practice and to keep repeating to yourself. Um, so have a great night. Take good notes and we'll see you tomorrow.